Hey guys, I got a cool new style gel ball blaster here. I've started to see this style show up on Amazon. I wanted to get one for you guys to check out. It's a little different than we've seen before, a different hopper style, but it's from a brand that I've shown you before. The brand is Darkant, D-A-R-K-A-N-T. Uh, Dark Ant had a really nice G36. Unfortunately, it's not on Amazon anymore, but they also have uh, AKM 47 and several other gel ball blasters, and I'm sure they'll be bringing more to Amazon too. So what they call this is they call it an MP9. So I'm going to refer to this model as the Dark Ant MP9 as well. I know it doesn't necessarily look exactly like an MP9, um, so if you want to put that in the comments, that's fine, but it doesn't really matter. That's what this model is called. That's what we're going to refer to it as. So it's the Dark Ant MP9, and what's important is how it works anyway, and how it looks, and if you like that, so don't get caught up in semantics. So we're going to do a little kind of showcasing unboxing here and setting up. And I'll do a separate video where I demonstrate it and I test the FPS and I'll attach that to the end of this one. All right, first off, I always like to get it out of the way. Safety glasses, of course, come with it. Make sure you guys are wearing some sort of eye protection when you're playing with your gel ball blasters. Even sunglasses provide good eye protection, so just make sure you wear something. This one comes with a lot of gel beads. In fact, I give you 60,000 gel beads. So that is plenty to last you for a long time. That's a great amount. That's more than most include with a blaster. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about gel ball prep. We might as well do it right now. When you're soaking these, make sure you're using a large enough container, uh, the right amount of water. You need to make sure you have plenty of water. To soak them for four to six hours. That way they will get to that seven to eight millimeters that they have to get to. Don't worry, they're not gonna get too big. Strain off any excess water and then you can load them up in your hopper. You'll notice that this hopper has no way of removing it and keeping it airtight like those grenade or pineapple styles. So I just would never store any uh, gel balls in here. And of course you never wanna store any gel balls in there while it's on the blaster for an extended period of time. Of course, if you're playing throughout the day, it's fine to leave them on there, you know, even probably if you're gonna play the next day. But after that, I would make sure you're removing them and not storing any gel balls on there. This is a little hopper or a little um, magazine storage for additional gel balls. So we've seen it with some of the Uzi style gel ball blasters where they give you what looks kind of like a magazine clip that's gonna connect down here. And that's just a place where you can store extra gel balls so when your hopper runs out, you can refill and you have them on you. Okay, so that's kind of a cool different way of doing it. When it comes to soaking the gel balls, I typically soak them in a container like this. So to give you an idea, and that has a lid so that you can go ahead and store them. Okay, got that out of the way. Battery. Obviously, it comes with your battery and your USB charger. Plug this into any AC adapter that's one amp or greater. You guys, that's important that you're plugging these into decent chargers. Um, they don't have to be like a giant power block, but like something you charge your cell phone with, not like an auxiliary USB on uh, an alarm clock or a lamp or something like that, unless they're well noted that they're, you know, an amp or greater. These are four pin connections, okay? And of course, when you plug it in and charge it, you only plug it in one way. And this is just a single plug battery. So that plug is going to plug into your charger and into your blaster. Battery compartment here. The door does slide off all the way, which makes it easier to put the battery in. But of course, once you get the hang of it, and you can see this battery compartment is fairly large. Go ahead, tuck that in. Sometimes you really have to figure out, you know, a way to get batteries into these compartments, but this one does have a decent amount of room. So you just kind of have to put it down there and then slide that door on, okay? The battery or power button and safety buttons right here. Click it once and then we'll turn it off again. All right, so got the battery on. We've gone over that. Something just to touch on quick that's kind of cool that they include. We're seeing this more with some different blasters. Obviously, they give you some directions and some pointers, but then they give you a couple of these little targets that are the water-activated targets you can shoot at. So, you know, when your blaster hits them, it's going to leave a mark, and then when it dries, that mark's going to disappear. So that's pretty cool. Uh, back to the blaster. 
So we got the battery charged. We got everything else. Let's talk about putting it together. A little additional reservoir for storage. It's gonna clip on the bottom here. You can see how it's gonna line up like that. You've got this little button right here. So I found it's easiest to just go ahead and push that button back. And then we're gonna just pop this in. And then make sure that button goes forward. It's locked in, so you can store some extra gel balls in there. Now we got a little grip that can go on the front. So you can see this has a little different mechanism than I've seen on other grips. So when you push it down like this, it's supposed to be unlocked. You can slide it on. Again, it's just a matter of lining it up. All right. Once you slide it on, put that forward. That's supposed to help lock it in place. And then you can just remove this, you know, when you're changing the battery, you can just use that to adjust the door, open the door, close the door, that kind of thing. Same situation with this hopper. So like I said, this is a different style hopper than we've seen before. It's not that grenade or pineapple style. See your door right here. And because there's a hole in it, you're not gonna wanna load it until you put it on. I'm gonna look at the top here. You can see where that is. I'm gonna just slide this on. It slides directly into place. It's lined up, and then if you clip that, that's supposed to help lock it. So again, once you have that on, you can leave it on, you're ready. So I had some other gel balls ready to go. Just gonna kind of funnel them in here like I would with any other hopper. Probably won't completely fill it up. So I got that loaded up and we're ready to go shoot. So I'll do some testing with this. It'll be interesting to see how the FPS is on this. I'm not sure of the internal gearbox. Um, so we'll check that out. So make sure you watch the rest of the video. Thanks for checking me out and uh, please leave some comments, some likes and subscribe. So here's a new style gel ball blaster I'm seeing showing up on Amazon. Of course, you're gonna have multiple sellers selling it. They're all essentially gonna be the same thing. There might be um, a few quality differences, but the gearbox is almost guaranteed to be the same across the board for all of these. Um, this one is the Darkent MP9. I'm familiar with Darkent. They had a really nice G36 that was available for a while. Uh, unfortunately, that's not on there anymore. They have an AKM-47 that's a good quality AKM-47, and this is their new, uh, they call it their MP9. So I showed it to you earlier. I got it all set up. We're going to go ahead, we're going to shoot some with it, and we're going to test the FPS on it. So it shoots good. Don't seem to be any feeding issues with this different style hopper, which I expected there wouldn't be. And that's consistent with what I did earlier. It's about 140 FPS on average, according to my chronograph. So 140 FPS, uh, so not bad. And again, it's the MP9. It is from Darkant, D-A-R-K-A-N-T. Find it on Amazon. And of course, you know, uh, if you got any questions or comments, put them below. Make sure you guys are participating in the giveaways and make sure you're subscribed and telling other people about my channel. Thanks.